A very warm welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist with spiritual communion at Christ's Church Cathedral on this, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We may not be able to gather in person. Nonetheless, we remain united in the Spirit of Christ, whom we receive afresh in the course of this service of worship. My name is Jay Lefebvre, and I have the privilege of being an honorary assistant here at this beautiful cathedral. I am joined today by the very Reverend Tim Dobbin, Dean of Niagara and Rector of this cathedral, Michael Bloss, our Director of Music, and Richard Cunningham and Mark Russom, who are cathedral choral leads. Thank you to all of you for your participation, as well as your continued love and devotion to this place and to this community. As we offer our service of worship, we are especially mindful of our Indigenous brothers and sisters. As a people of God, we denounce religious, cultural, and racially based hatred and prejudice of any kind and we commit towards working towards reconciliation and promoting healing for all personal and intergenerational trauma amongst our Indigenous brothers and sisters. And we continue to respect the history, spirituality, and culture of our First Nations, Inuit and Métis, and acknowledge our responsibilities as treaty peoples. As we prepare now to celebrate the Eucharist together, please take a few moments to still your hearts and minds in the presence of our living God. A great prophet has arisen among us. God has visited his people. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. Almighty God, to you, to you all hearts are open, all, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Find the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we God, the protector of all who trust in you, 
without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that you, as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also and with you. The Holy Gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough food for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they'd rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. May the words that I speak bring us closer to God. May the words that I speak be true to God. Amen. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. How are you? How are you doing? How are you feeling? When we see someone or talk to them on the telephone or through FaceTime or Zoom or through texting, we usually start our conversation with one of those questions. It's kind of built into our communication etiquette. And usually we hear the answer, 
I'm fine, how about you? Or, okay, you? And instinctingly, we too, as if on autopilot, also say, oh, I'm fine, thank you. And we say this even if we aren't really just fine. Now let me ask you this question in a slightly different way. Let me ask you, how have you been doing during this COVID period? Different answer? For me, that would be a resounding yes. I have found this third wave to be very difficult and very trying. As someone who lives alone, the social isolation has been a significant challenge to me in terms of coping and feeling positive and upbeat. Oh yes, I've tried to keep connected through virtual means, but it is just not the same thing as seeing someone in person. And physical touch, a friendly hug or a handshake or an embrace with a kiss with those closest to me, I have sorely missed those and I shall not ever take them for granted in the future. And if that were not enough to cope with, there's the constant news of what's happening in Canada and around the world with regards to COVID. And that has the net effect of, well, making me feel even more tired and run down and not my usual cheery self. Down in a big way, even feeling hopeless, although not in a way that is debilitating since I'm able to function fairly normally, but certainly a profound effect on me nonetheless. And I don't know why, but when I have felt the most lonely, I have also felt paralyzed to do anything about it. When this happened, I often asked myself why I couldn't muster up the wherewithal to reach out for some connection. It was the very thing I needed after all. But I could not, or I don't seem to be able to bring myself to do that. It was like I expected or wanted or needed someone to reach out to me, to rescue me from my doldrums. And I wonder if any of you, whether you live alone or not, have felt anything like that during this COVID period. COVID has undeniably changed our routines, our outlook on life. COVID has challenged our mental health in a way that none of us could ever have imagined possible. And I miss being in assembly hugely. I miss seeing you here in this place. It is weird, although I'm thankful for this opportunity, but it's weird to be celebrating the liturgy with you today and even sharing some of my thoughts as I'm doing right now in front of a camera. Well, better than nothing, but somehow just doesn't provide me with the spiritual closeness and connection that I get when we are together, singing hymns, praying together, and enjoying some fellowship and some refreshment afterwards. And while I am hopeful and encouraged that some in-person visits can now be made and that we are ever so slowly starting to be able to do more things, the road still feels like it's long and winding, especially because of the threat of this variant D or for the threat that some other mutation may occur that may be immune to our vaccines. So I ask again, how are you? Really, how are you? Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya.
Our gospel passage this morning from John includes the well-known account of the feeding of the 5,000. And this story is included in all the gospels, so it is an important happening. Now, much has been preached about this event, like was it a true miracle? That is, did Jesus literally really multiply the loaves and fishes? Or did something else extraordinary happen because of what Jesus said or did? You know, I don't really think it matters how it happened. What matters is that something extraordinary happened because Jesus did something that no one expected. No one expected anyone to do. Jesus asked the disciples to trust him, and they did, though it must not have been easy for them to trust him, since what he was asking them to do defied all logic. And Philip expresses his concern and says that even if they had six months' worth of wages, they would still not have enough food, even if they could buy food where they were, which Philip knew they couldn't, for even a small morsel to be shared. The disciples must surely have been beside themselves. How can five loaves and five fishes feed this crowd? But they do have enough, and then some. In the feeding of the 5,000, Christ shows us that if we can learn to trust in him, surrender ourselves in him, give ourselves to God, open ourselves up to something that we aren't currently, that God will provide us with enough of what we need in order to carry on in our daily lives. And not only enough, but an abundance, an abundance. Someone's lonely, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's lonely, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's lonely, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. So why is it so difficult for us to fully embrace this message? Why is it so easy for us to go into the place of despair when we are in the midst of COVID? Why is it so easy for us to ignore our relationship with God and the hope and support that it can bring to us when we are faced with uncertainty and adversity? Well, I think part of the answer lies in the second part of the gospel, fear, lack of trust, and just plain human nature. The disciples are in the boat and the weather gets pretty rough. Now at first they aren't afraid, but after rowing for a while, they see Jesus walking towards them on the water and the scripture says they are terrified. How can this be? They can't believe it's Jesus even though it looked like him. Impossible. Their fear doesn't go away until Jesus gets up to them and gets into the boat and tells them that it is him. And once he's in the boat, the fear is abated. Wow, here's another time when Jesus is doing something extraordinary, someone that no one expects that he can do. And it turns out to be a calming and assuring moment for the disciples. I think, just like the disciples, that when we are presented with something that is outside the norm, outside the boundaries under which we normally live and experience life, that we too are very easily become afraid. We lose our way and we allow fear and despair to overwhelm to the point where it is all we concentrate on to the detriment of our relationship with God and in turn with each other and the world around us. And it happens so easily. It's like it's built into our human nature. Yes, I know, it seems like COVID waves will drown us. Yes, it feels like we can't row against the COVID tide. Yes, we may lose our feeling from time to time that Jesus is with us. 
if I suppose we think of Jesus at all. We can't operate our boat in this COVID storm. That is, our lives. We can't. We'll drown. We'll not make it. Well, I don't know about you, but the gospel this morning is something that I desperately need to hear, especially, especially right now during this continued COVID, and to constantly remind myself of it. It brings hope, actually, into my soul, and it really lifts my mood. It reminds me, us, that we are not alone, even if we may feel lonely, that Jesus is actually right beside us. There is no need to live in despair or fear because Jesus is working in ex extraordinary and unimagined ways in our lives already. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. And it's our vocation to recognize this and to embrace it. Let our fear and anxiety go onto Jesus' shoulders. Jesus is here supporting and encouraging us and holding us up. And I think especially now when we are so weary and tired and feel hopeless or depressed around all things COVID, that this is good news and we need to hear it and to constantly remind ourselves about this great gift. Now, I've been singing a song that I think most of us know and many of us will have learned around a campfire, Kumbaya. But Kumbaya actually is not just a camp or fanciful song. It is actually intended to be a prayer to God. It was sung as an African-American spiritual and it originated by sl from slaves who worked in the land of South Carolina and Georgia. And interesting, the original words were, come by here, Lord. But they were originally spoken in Gullah, a Creole language that the slaves used. And in this original dialect, the words would have sounded to us more like, come by ya, Y-U-H. And so the words later morphed into what we have today, kumbaya. And African Americans sung this as a way of asking God to come and help them. Come by here, Lord. It was a prayerful plea that asked God to come to them, to be with them, to save them from their slavery, to save them from the tyranny in which they had to live. It was very comforting to them. And so just as it was for those original slaves, it is a fitting prayer for us to sing. And I invite you, when you are starting to feel the heaviness of COVID or the heaviness of life that is stirring up fear and anxiety, things that take us away from God, sing. Sing Kumbaya. Hum Kumbaya to invite God to fill your soul with peace and love and above all, with hope. That's pretty fantastic news for us to hear and embrace. Now we need you, Lord, kumbaya. Now we need you, Lord, kumbaya. Now we need you, Lord, kumbaya.
Let us confess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one, one being with the Father, through him, through him all, all things, things remain. Were made. For us and for, and for our salvation, salvation he, came he came down, down from heaven. heaven. By the power, By the power of, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit he came he became incarnate, incarnate from the Virgin, from the Virgin Mary, Mary and was made man. man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. scriptures. He ascended ascended into heaven heaven and is seated seated at the right hand hand of the Father. He will come come again in glory to judge judge the living and the dead, dead, and and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, life, who proceeds from from the the Father. Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has has spoken spoken through through the prophets. We believe believe in one holy Catholic Catholic and apostolic church. Church. We We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We We look look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ is worthy of all praise, for he was appointed high priest among us. Blessed Lord, we offer our spirits to you this day, gathered souls of your redeeming. All our thoughts, words, and actions, all our sufferings and disappointments, and all our joys. We beseech you to hear our prayers and intercessions as we are united in you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You, O Lord, are close. Your commands are truth. Long have we known that your will is established forever. We pray for the church and the world, particularly the Scottish Episcopal Church, the East Central area of the Lutheran Synod of Alberta and the Territories, as well as the Anglican Diocese of Edmonton. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Aidan's, Oakville, and our partner diocese of Cuba. Redeem this world and our mission with your peace, pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick, and the dying, particularly Eric, Susan, Linda, Michael, Joseph, Kathy, Rob, Diana, Peter, Mildred, Emily, and Nina. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Though we walk in the shadow of death, we will not fear any evil, for God is with us. God prepares a place for us. God of mercy, listen to our prayers and look with love on your servants who have died, especially Mitchelston Henderson Weeks. Eternal rest grant unto all who have died 
and look with love on those who mourn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O oh, send forth your light and your truth. Let these be our guide as they have brought our sisters and brothers to follow you to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Today we pray and rejoice in the ministry of Tom Ziegler, Helen Wright, and Norma Wright. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Embracing God, the hand of your loving kindness powerfully yet gently guides all the moments of our day. Go before us in our pilgrimage of life, anticipate our needs, and prevent our failing. Send your spirit to unite us in faith, that sharing in your service, we may rejoice in your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As brothers and sisters in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved, loved you with our, with our whole, whole heart. heart. We have, we have not, not loved our neighbors, our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We, are we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. repent. For, the For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you into everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of our Savior be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you.
God of grace, accept all we offer you this day <coughs> as we look toward the glory you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. By water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the holy people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh. Thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember, we remember his, his death, death, we proclaim, we proclaim his, his resurrection, and we await, await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins as we, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save, save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from, us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, better of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Amen. 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 I invite you in the silence of your own hearts to make your own act of communion with our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. God of grace, we have received the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son. May your love poured into us bring us to your promises. We ask this in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace who called you into his glory in Jesus Christ establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.